I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos, delighted to be joined by Simon Zadek, Senior Fellow at CG. Thanks for coming along. My pleasure. Tell me, the theme here at Davos is great transformations. What does that mean to you? Well, uh, there's been so much debate over the last couple of years framed in many ways about capitalism in crisis, sustainable capitalism, uh, the future of financial markets, uh, and many other dimensions of what for 30 years we've all assumed is a sort of Tina. You know, there is no alternative, vaguely neoliberal way of thinking about markets, economies, and the way societies form around them. You know, so if the great transformation is to mean something, then it is a challenge and a useful challenge of that 30 years experience. I noticed on the internet that you had some interesting words to say to Martin Wolf in terms of what the uh, recommendations could be for the leaders who are out wandering the streets of Davos. What was your take on that? Well, Martin's article, The Seven Ways to Fix the System's Flaws, I think it was a few days ago, I think makes for an interesting read. Um, and he talks about accountability and governance issues. He talks about the financial markets. He talks about political lobbying and the problem of corporate financing of political processes. So in many ways, he calls out some of the really big issues. Yeah, so all power to him. Uh, I think the downside is that the solutions that he's describing uh, are partial at best. Uh, you know, so on the one hand, you know, he relegates uh, solutions to weaknesses in corporate governance to, you know, we need smart, intelligent, well-informed, non-executive directors. I mean, he says a bit more, but it's very much a sort of Anglo-Saxon business as usual. On the political financing side, he quite rightly says we need to get rid of this kind of large-scale political financing from the business community, but doesn't really offer any solutions for a kind of turkeys at Christmas type problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then to take a fairly obvious example, you know, three lines from the end of his article, he mentions the fact that the environment is all, but neither makes any suggestions about it at all, nor offers any connectivity of some of our environmental challenges to the state of the economy, the subject, actually the primary subject of the article. And so, you know, my dear Mr. Wolf article on open democracy basically says, you know, you're my hero, thanks very much great issues that you've identified, but could you up your game slightly? If you were to pick out one or two things that you would have added, if you wrote that article, what, were the thing, what would be the things that you would point to? Well, following our discussion last year, in fact, mm -hmm. um, I think the linkages between financial market reform and building a set of capital markets that invest in long-term, resilient, sustainable uh, economies you know, remains the elephant in the bedroom, the Cinderella to the show, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is still a huge opportunity in this moment of flux to up our game in talking about uh, what kind of policy measures can really move financial market reform away from a pure don't let it collapse again to uh, how do we make capital markets do their historic job, which is to create economies in the future for our children and grandchildren. That would be certainly uh, a major piece of the story. I, I do think the political economy issues are really key. Um, and, and so I think this Turkey for Christmas problem, how we deal with corporate financing of political process, which is particularly a problem in the US, but not exclusively in the US, is clearly something we need to grapple with a little bit more. Um, and, and I guess, uh, as we were talking about briefly before we started mm -hmm. the interview, you know, we've gone through, uh, I don't know, a decade of saying, you know, we're fed up with governments, maybe businesses have the solution. We're fed up with businesses, maybe the UN has the solution. We're fed up with the UN, maybe NGOs have the solution. We're fed up with them, and what about crowdsourcing? And, and I, you know, I guess I'm wandering around Davos a This is the Davos role of technology and... Yeah, I guess I'm wandering around technology. Yeah, I'm, I'm wandering around Davos a bit thinking, who are the agents of change that we have some faith in? Or are we really relying for change on the devil within us. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, the ability to make money, but money in a smart way, the ability to become a political leader, um, but to do it in a nice way, and, and so on. You know, you know, where is the ethos that drives us in a more progressive direction? And, and 
Although Davos has just started, I've already spent uh, last night and this morning, early morning breakfast, sitting in sessions very focused on technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and technology is, again, this sort of Cinderella subject that you know, progressive folks tend to dismiss because they don't like technological optimism, because it appears to be a substitute for fixing governance and accountability problems. Uh, but, but I think we need to grapple more effectively mm -hmm. with understanding the role of technology, not just internet-based technology that allows crowdsourcing and so on, but a whole range of technologies are really going to play over the next 10 to 15 years as part of a solution pathway. Grappling with technology. Simon, we're going to leave it there. Thanks again for stopping into the Hub Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lash.